Well, hi, everybody. Today we want to talk about common childhood illnesses and conditions. These are the ones that children come across most often, and they're ones that we can generally do something about either to avoid or to help in a situation. So let's jump in. Common childhood illnesses and conditions include asthma, which is a disorder of the respiratory or breathing passages, and that's when they become inflamed or swollen and narrow. It also includes allergies, which is hypersensitivity to a substance or overreacting to a substance. Diabetes, which is our body's inability to break down sugar. And epilepsy, which is a condition someone has when they are prone to experiencing seizures. These conditions can be mild or serious, and they may even be life-threatening. Knowing the ways to avoid the conditions from occurring is best. If the condition happens, though, the person or those around him or her need to recognize the symptoms and know what to do to control the condition from getting worse. Let's take asthma. Asthma, or a disorder of the respiratory passages, when they become inflamed or narrow, as you can see in this drawing, normal, at normal airways look like the airway on the left. A person with asthma has an airway that normally looks like the one in the middle. You can tell the pipe there is a little tighter. When they're having an asthmatic attack, that's the one on the right. You can see where the walls of that airway swell up, and that doesn't leave very much room for air to come through. The best prevention involves avoiding exposure to, tr exposure, exposure rather, to triggers, such as pollen, pet dander, and overexercise. Oftentimes, avoiding these situations can cause a person who is asthmatic not to have an asthma attack. But the person with asthma may experience wheezing, coughing, and tightness in their chest. In that case, it's best for the person to stop any activity they're doing, stay calm, and take the medication that they need in order to ease the asthmatic symptoms. An allergic reaction or hypersensitivity to a substance we think of it as being allergic to something, can happen in any number of ways. What often happens in allergic reactions is people get swelling in their throat or somewhere on their body. They sneeze a lot. A rash forms somewhere on their body. They may get sick to their stomach and begin to vomit. Or they may have watery eyes. Often, a person has to take an antihistamine medication to control allergic reactions. In the most serious allergic reactions, we call this anaphylaxis. That's when a person has a loss of consciousness or their heart rate starts to go very fast or very slow. They may be very uncontrollably itchy. Their breathing may become wheezing or coughing and they're not able to get a good breath in, or their lips tongue, or throat may swell to a point where they feel like they're choking. In this case, immediate response is needed, 911 needs to be called, and if there's an EpiPen in the area, an EpiPen needs to be administered to this person. Diabetes is a common juvenile and adult issue as well. There are two types of diabetes. There's type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is juvenile diabetes. That's diabetes that someone is born with. Type 2, or adult onset diabetes, can happen at any time in a person's life, but it's diabetes that you are not born with, but comes about in the course of someone's life. Diabetes, in general, is a condition where a person produces little or no insulin, Insulin breaks down sugar in the body and in the blood. So if you don't have insulin, the levels of sugar in the blood get to be too high, which is very dangerous. 
if you don't have enough insulin in a diabetic person, we recognize it because oftentimes these people have extreme thirst. They may pee a lot or urinate a lot. They may get sick to their stomach and vomit. They're hungry uncontrollably. And at the same time, they're very tired. The way to control diabetes is to monitor your blood sugar level, eat proper amounts of carbohydrates, stay on a regular schedule with eating and checking your blood sugar and balancing exercise. Taking too much insulin, missing a meal, or getting too much exercise for a person who's diabetic can cause the opposite direct uh, condition of too much sugar. Instead, they can have something called insulin shot, shock. And in that case, we need to eat a source of sugar very quickly. In every situation a diabetic may find themselves in, the person needs to be asked if they've taken their medication and if they've eaten. Follow-up care is very important. Finally, we want to be aware of epilepsy. Epilepsy is a branch or a, a condition that has many branches to it. Most of the conditions around epilepsy can be controlled somewhat with medication. A person with epilepsy may have a seizure. A seizure might be something as small looking to the outside person as a loss of awareness or a twitching for some time. In severe seizures, there are muscle spasms where someone tightens up and then begins shaking. They may lose consciousness and they may collapse to the ground. Please remember, if even if you've never seen a seizure before and you come across someone who's experiencing a seizure for the first time, it can be shocking. But we want everyone to remain calm. The person experiencing a seizure should never be restrained. They should be assisted to sit or lie down. But then beyond that, we want to move things out of their way so that they don't bump into something if they're on the ground. And we want to make sure that nothing is put inside the person's mouth. So we sit and we wait with that person, making sure that they are safe while they're having their seizure. And after their seizure, we give them comfort and wait for care to come to help them. Thanks so much for listening today. These are common illnesses that occur in children and in people around children. So it's important for you to be aware of them and know generally what to do if you do encounter such an issue. Thanks for listening.